Hello, if you're new, my name is Samantha, and today I'm just going to be doing a postpartum Q&A. I am two months postpartum now. My baby is 10 weeks old, if you want to be more technical than two months. And I asked some questions on YouTube and on Instagram, and I'm just going to go through them. Okay, first question. How is your overall mood? Is it hard to stay at home all day with the baby? Do you get bored or want company? Do you love it and not want to go back to work a 9 to 5? Okay, so lots of questions in that first question. Um, overall mood is great. Um, I actually had a lot of people ask about postpartum depression, so I just want to address that no, I'm not dealing with that at all. I was telling my husband the other day that I totally understand why people get postpartum depression. Um, it's hard work. You are with the baby like a lot of the time of the day. Um, breastfeeding is really hard. Having a baby is really hard and watching her all day long and making sure she like goes to sleep and she's not overtired and she has everything she needs. It's a lot of hard work, but for me, and I know this isn't the case for everyone, but for me, it's like the one thing that I've wanted forever. So it's kind of like it's the dream job. Just think about if you have a job that's okay, not your dream job, it's probably way more easy to do that job every single day and get depressed because you're just kind of bored with it because you're like, this isn't really how I want to be spending my day. Not to say that you don't love your kid, right? But like, maybe that's not just how you want to spend your day. For me, this kind of is the dream job. Um, this is how I want to be spending my day. I love spending my day with her, so I think it would be harder for a person like me to get depressed. Even in your dream job, there's going to be stressful, hard days. Like We've had a pretty hard week, actually. Um, but, you know, it's your dream job, and you like it. And it's what I have always wanted to do. Do I get bored or want company? Um, sometimes I get bored, but not usually. Um, I'm not really a people person anyway. I'm kind of very, very introverted. Um, I love being in Alaska, kind of just far away from people. I feel like it's kind of like a detox. Like we're not gonna stay here forever and we'll go back to our family and friends but for now just like having some distance from everything is actually like really awesome for me i'm just like really enjoying it and i love all those people and they're great and i really like hanging out with all of them but i don't know i just um i feel like for this amount of time it's great to be kind of away and doing my own thing do I not want to go back to work a 9 to 5? At this point, I don't have any plans to go back. Um, when we left Virginia, I had to quit my job, um, which was kind of silly because I was doing a lot of it remotely anyway. If they had let me keep my job when we moved to Alaska, then I'd probably still be working it, and I'd probably be moving back to Virginia to work there after this year. Um, but, you know, I couldn't keep that job. So now that I haven't been at it. I don't really have any plans to go back uh, to a 9 to 5, any 9 to 5, but that could change. Um, I could get bored, things could happen. I'm not going to say that I'm never going to go back to it, but as of right now, I'm not. Is the darkness of winter tolerable? Yeah, I've actually had no problem at all. Um, I've been busy with a baby, so we've been inside like most of the time anyway for the hard part of the winter, which here in this area, because we're near Anchorage, Alaska, it's not too bad. I think the worst of it is December and January and on the worst day of the year with the least amount of sunlight, which was the baby's due date actually, um, I think the sun was rising around 10.30 and setting at 3.30. So that was the hardest day we have and it's only been up from there since then. And yeah, so it was really only December and January that were bad and now it just now in February kind of feels like normal winter days and feels fine. This is another frequently asked question. Are you getting post-pregnancy scans to make sure all is good? I'm actually in the middle of discussing this with my oncologist right now. Uh, we're just trying to decide what kind of scans that we want to do and if I will have to have an interruption to breastfeeding to get the scans or anything like that. So not sure yet but talking about it and I'm sure I will let you know if I have any scans. What's the hardest part about being a mom? So like I said, I love it. Um, so I thought hard about this question. I think that the hardest part is probably 
um, when she cries and I can't do anything about it so she'll get really 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 upset in the car when she can't see me and it like kind of breaks my heart because she will scream so much for like five minutes and she will soak through her clothes and soak through the car seat because she's so worked up and then I go and get her out of the car and she takes one look at me and falls asleep because she's just like, oh, all I wanted was to be able to see you. And it's like, I tried talking to her. I can't stop the car, right? Because I'm in a car. So I don't know. Uh, that's one of the hardest things is when she's crying and I'm in the car and I can't help her. And then another hard thing that I wrote down is the constant calculations you kind of have to do. Um, that I wasn't really expecting. Honestly, we don't really have a schedule yet because she's kind of too young for that. I kind of just go with the flow and do it, what she wants. But there are times when I have to be keeping like this constant calculation in my head of like how much sleep has she had, um, when was the last time she ate, how long has it been between all of those things. Because sometimes you're trying to plan something like you're trying to go out to eat or something. And so you're like, okay, what time do I need to feed the baby? What time do I need to leave the house so that we can have the lowest possible chance of a meltdown? Still, sometimes if you plan it, it doesn't go according to plan. But there, are, I feel like there are ways that you can do things to kind of try to prevent them from happening. And those are the calculations that I'm doing. Why did you stop Kiss Collie? Was it just because of the side effects? So Kiskali was my uh, targeted therapy that I was on. It's also called Ribocyclib. And I have a whole video about why I stopped hormone therapy. It's very long. It was a very, very hard decision for me. Um, I went like back and forth on it like s for so long. Like probably like the entire time I was on it, I wanted to not be on it. Um, and I stayed on it for two years. Um, so a lot of thought went into that decision, but yeah, ultimately it was because of the side effects. Um, they were way hard on me. I hated it. I hated how I felt while I was on it. I hated what it did to me mentally, uh, knowing I had to take that medication and feel bad. It was just bad. But if you want to know all the reasons, because there's lots of them, and if you want to know my thought process, check out that video. Um, and I would not have been able to get pregnant while I was on that medication. Um, but that wasn't the reason that I stopped. We decided to try to get pregnant after I had stopped and been off of it and I started like feeling really good, and feeling more like myself. That's when we decided to get pregnant. And then I just want to address because I got like a ton of questions asking if I'm going to resume treatment now that I've had the baby. And right now I don't really have any plans to go on any hormone therapy, um, but it's possible that I might do some Zometa infusions, which was kind of like a bone protecting drug that I was doing every six months uh, I would get infusion at the cancer center, so I might be doing that, but again, um, I'm talking with my oncologist about that, trying to figure out if it makes sense to do that, um, and then if I will have to like interrupt breastfeeding to do that. How are you feeling about the choice to have an epidural during your daughter's birth? You seem to be unhappy about the decision. Hope all four of you are well. All four of us, including Q. So basically the story is I went from three centimeters to 10 centimeters really fast. And when I was deciding to get the epidural, no one had checked me yet. No one knew what my cervix was dilated at. And I was made to believe that it was going to be hours and hours and hours until I had the baby. So I was made to believe that I was going to be in more pain than I was already in and that things were gonna get worse and worse and that I was going to have to be dealing with it for hours and hours. Um, that was not the case because I was basically already at 10 centimeters. I don't know for sure um, because they checked me after I got the epidural. So I got the epidural they, and then they waited 10 minutes for it to take its effects and then they checked me. Then I was at 10 centimeters. I could have not been right at 10 when I asked for the epidural, but I was probably at eight or nine. And if I had known that, then I wouldn't have chosen to get the epidural. I'm trying not to get too upset about it because I know my mind was made up in that moment. I was positive that I was going to be having this long labor and I don't think anyone could have changed my mind unless they did the cervical check. And they did keep saying that they were going to do the cervix check, 
but I they just never did. If you want more details on that, then watch my birth story video. It's pretty long, sorry, but if you're interested, you can check that out. I would have much rather done it naturally because I didn't really like how I felt when I was on the epidural. I mean, I loved how it stopped the contractions. Like, sure, yeah, that was great. Um, but I didn't like how it made my head feel and how it kind of made me feel like I had to think extra hard to be in the moment. And I didn't like how it made everything numb. And I didn't like the pushing because I couldn't feel anything at all. And I just kind of felt like I wasn't really in the moment. I don't, I don't really know how to describe it. But, but if I was giving birth again, I would know more about like how my body reacts. Um, what I, I'll know about what I'm feeling and kind of where I am in the labor. Um, obviously things can go crazy and I could decide again to get the epidural, but I think probably for my next baby, if we have one, I don't want one. I just think it'll be better for me. And I also, I also didn't like how I couldn't walk after. I also think that the catheter caused issues afterwards. I had all of these problems. If I was doing it again, I would have had them check my cervix before I got the epidural. And if I was at even eight centimeters, I would have been like, yeah, that's fine. Like, I don't need it. But I kind of thought that I was still at three. <laughs> it's also kind of annoying because it feels like I got to like the hardest part and then just didn't do the full thing. It feels like, yeah, it would have been really hard to finish it and would have been painful, but I like basically was there and I was so close and then that's why it's kind of annoying to me because it was just like then I got the epidural and it was just like now I have to tell people yeah I got the epidural but I also know what it feels like to be 10 centimeters dilated and complete and ready to push a baby out. <laughs> What's the thing that most surprised you about motherhood or about her? So a lot of it is kind of as expected just because I went into it not really expecting anything. I don't really know if that sentence made sense but like I kind of went into it thinking we could have an easy baby, we could have a hard baby. So I didn't really have a lot of expectations. And the thing that's most surprised me about her is how strong she is and how alert she is. She kind of came out of the womb just looking around. I've known since she was inside me that she was really strong with her legs because she would kick me in my ribs. She's still really strong with her legs and she's really strong with her neck. Just like she just holds that head up and she's always looking around and everyone's always commenting on how alert she is. And there's good things and bad things with that. So she's hard to get to sleep because of it. Um, if she's anywhere where there's anything to look at, she cannot sleep. It's like I have to get her in a dark room and staring at a blank wall and be bouncing her. And like that's the only way I can get her to sleep at this, at this time. <laughs> How has Q adjusted? Did Gray take time off? So Q is working on it. Um, I've said before, Q likes to um, alert me about the baby. Whenever she starts crying, Q will come and find me. Sometimes when the baby sleeps and she's in my arms, Q will come up and put her head on top of the baby. So yeah, Q has adjusted, but she also hasn't. Um, she hasn't gotten used to the fact that she's not the center of attention. Q is literally louder than the baby and she will wake the baby up all the time because she's constantly meowing for no reason just because she just wants people to know that she's around. And Gray did take time off. He took two weeks off of work so that was really helpful in the beginning. We had a bunch of trouble in the beginning with her sleeping because she would only sleep if she was on top of someone. She still kind of really only does that but I'll get to that in a second. We were told like only put her down in the bassinet on her back with nothing there and obviously she didn't like to sleep like that. Um, she only liked to sleep like on top of my chest or on top of Gray's chest. So basically in those two weeks when Gray was home we would take shifts during the night and you know she would wake she would wake up every three hours to eat so you know for three hours Gray would sleep with her on her chest and then she would wake up or we would wake her up because in the beginning sometimes you have to wake them up and he would he always changed the diaper and I would feed her and I would watch her and in the beginning she kind of had day and night confused so it was kind of just like every three hours we went back and forth sometimes she would be asleep and sometimes she would be awake and then when Gray went back to work it was really hard because she was still not sleeping in her bassinet and so it was hard for me to get enough sleep. So then we started doing a thing where he would take her until midnight. I would sleep from like 9 p.m. till midnight 
and that would always help me a lot get through the rest of the night. What's the wildest, most unexpected thing about postpartum you didn't know before? So, I thought about this one, and I think my answer is how quickly your body goes back to normal. So, there was like so much that goes on down there, right? And I know that some people take longer to heal, like you can have different amounts of tears in different places, you can have a c-section, which is worse than what I had. Um, I... I need to go get her. <laughs> She's here eating, but I only have, like, a little bit left, so I'll just finish this real quick. I had a second degree tear, and, uh, it went in, like, weird places, so my OB was like, oh, this is gonna be hard to heal. And it, it was, it took a while, but still, I'm so surprised at how fast it was. Like, everything kind of started going back into place. I just... Breastfeeding was super painful, and I'll probably make a whole video on that, but, like, that was the thing that I was still using my pain medication for. It wasn't for, um, <laughs> the stuff that was it was prescribed for. An entire human came out of my body, so it makes sense that it would be swollen and that it would hurt for a while, but, like, I was surprised at how fast everything went back to normal. Are you going to share your daughter's name? I've been asked that a lot, and I mentioned this in my birth story video, but it was right at the very end, so I think a lot of people didn't make it that far. Right now, I just don't really want to for, like, privacy reasons. Um, that might change. Maybe I'll decide I want to share, but as of right now, it's kind of my thing. I just don't really want to. So I kind of feel a little bit bad about it because I teased a little bit that like, oh, we're not going to know the baby's name until she's born. But at the same time, I'm not going to just share her name because people on the internet want me to share her name. Like I'm going to do it if I feel comfortable doing that. And right now I just don't really want to. Um, and like I said, that could change. And I've gotten a lot of people asking why I'm not showing her very much and like not showing her face. And I don't think I've shared anything with like her eyes being open where you can like actually see her face well and same reason just just privacy thing and I'm not trying to make this channel about the baby it's still my channel I just don't want to end up sharing too much and regretting it so I'm just being really cautious and not share showing much of her right now um, and I'm sorry about that if you came here because you wanted to see a cute baby because she's actually the cutest baby I've ever seen. And that's all I have for today. Uh, sorry if I didn't get to your question. A lot of them were repeats are really similar so I kind of tried to pick the ones that like were different enough. I might do another one of these later if you guys are still interested. Um, but thanks so much for watching this video and if you want to check out the rest of the videos on my channel you should do that and also subscribe if you want. Yep, that's all. Bye!